In this video, I'm going to be solving some questions from the topic number sequences, some past paper questions uh, to be precise. Now, number sequences is not a topic that comes very often in paper two, but it can. It's one of those topics that can swing either way. So this, uh, the question that I have right over here is from October, November, 2019, paper two, variant one. So let's get straight to it. So it says here, they, these are the first four pattern First four patterns, sorry, in a sequence made using counters. Okay, so we can see that pattern number one has three counters, pattern number two has eight, pattern number three has 15. And now we have to write uh, the number of counters in pattern four, which we can simply count and do it. And then following the pattern, we have to write down the number of counters that we will have in pattern number five. So if I count the number of counters in pattern four, so that's four, eight, 12, well, if you don't really have to do that, let's just count the number of rows that we have. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So six times four, so that's gotta be 24, okay? Now let's let's examine the pattern and see if uh, we can if we can come up with a trend and using that trend, we'll find the number of counters in the fifth pattern number. Okay, so here we have three, three to eight, we can go by adding five. Eight to 15, we can go by adding seven. 15 to 24, we'll have to add nine. So you can, you should have picked up a pattern here. The pattern is that the term that you're always adding in order to get to the next number of counters is always two greater than the previous number that you added. So that means if I wanna find out the number of patterns in pattern number five, I'll simply add 11. So 24 plus 11 is equal to 35, yeah. So one mark, pretty simple. And one mark questions need to be exactly right. For example, if you did number, if you if you did one of the two right, then you can't get any marks since there's no, uh, there's no 0.5 in CIs. Now in part B, what you have to do is you have to find an expression in terms of n for the number of counters in pattern n. So basically you have to find the general term. Now I have made a couple of videos on how to find the general term of a quadratic sequence since that's what it is and I'll tell you why in a minute. And I'll hopefully attach the links of those videos in the description box if I haven't forgotten. So anyway. So how exactly is this a quadratic sequence? Let's first find that out. So three to eight, we can see the differences of five, eight to seven, the eight to 15, sorry, the differences of seven, 15 to 24, nine, and then 11. So if the difference of the difference is the same, which it, which it is exactly what's happening over here, the difference of the difference is two, then the sequence is a quadratic sequence. And then we'll use the formula for finding the general term of a quadratic sequence. Now, what exactly is the formula? The formula is as follows. Tn is equals to a plus n minus one into d1 plus d2 upon two into n minus one into n minus two. Now this formula is something that's kind of complex to remember. I personally don't uh, encourage students to memorize uh, a lot of things, but this is one of those things where you have to, it's best that you memorize this. So a here is the first term, which is three. So three plus n minus one. D1 is basically the difference between the first two terms, which in this case is five. So I'll label it over here. So five plus D2 is the difference of the difference, which is the same and that's two. Okay, so the difference between five and seven, seven and nine, nine and 11, and that's two. So plus two upon two. And then if you expand N minus one into N minus two, you get N square minus three N plus two. Now it's just a matter of simplifying. So I'll switch to another color. So two and two get canceled out and you have TN is equals to three plus five N minus five plus N square minus three N plus two. Now let's simplify and write down the final answer. So we just have n square, so n squared as it is. 5n minus 3n is gonna give us plus 2n, yeah. And then you have uh, three minus five, which is gonna be minus two, and then minus two plus two is gonna be zero. So either you can write plus zero or you can write nothing at all, okay? Now, once you've reached here, don't get carried away. It's always best that before you move on, you check your answer, okay? So I'm gonna randomly pick up a term, other than one, of course. So let's say, let's say four, let's say I pick up four. So if I plug in four in place of N, and if this is correct, I should get 24. So let's see, if I plug in four in place of N, so four square plus two times four, actually you don't really need a calculator for that, but yep, what you get is 24. Hopefully you can see it. So that means this is absolutely correct. We can be 100% sure that we've done this correctly. Okay, next. Part C says, Ken has a bag containing 1,358 counters. He makes the largest possible pattern in the sequence, pattern P using these counters, find the value of P. Okay, now pattern P, we don't know what pattern it is, it's P, but we do know that it contains 1,358 counters. Okay, so what that basically means is, suppose this was the 10th pattern. So what you what you do is you'd simply plug in 10 in place of N, but since this is pattern number P, I'm gonna plug in P in place of N. So P square plus two N 
is equals to 1358. Now this looks like a, actually 2p, sorry, not 2 and 2p. So this is becoming like a quadratic equation. Now a is basically the coefficient of x squared, which in this case is p, so no big deal. p is 2 and c is minus 1358. So to save some time, I'm just going to use the calculator and solve it directly. Otherwise, you'll have to use the quadratic formula, which is x equals to, in this case, p is equals to, okay, minus b plus minus square root of b square minus 4ac upon 2a. Okay, so like I said, I'm going to save some time and I'm going to do it in my calculator directly. So 1, 2 and minus 1358. So what I get is one value is 35.86. So let's write this 35.86 or we have p is equals to minus 37.86. Now, this is the point at which we have to choose. Okay, now we're going to reject the negative value. Okay, so that's that's a no brainer. But we have to decide whether it's going to be 35 or 36. Now, what a lot of students at this point would do is they'd look at 35.86, they'd say, oh, since this is closer to 36, that means the answer has got to be 36. But that's not the case because here, we're not just using the concept of rounding it off, okay? Now, this is something that I want you guys to really pay attention to. Suppose there is a room, okay, which has the capacity of, let's say, accommodating 32.9 students, okay? This is an example that I always give. So if this room has a capacity of accommodating 32.9 students, that basically means that, now, now suppose you wanna decide, obviously students have to be in integer form, okay? So now we have to decide how many students we're actually going to accommodate in this class. Now, conventional thinking would say that, you know, 32.9 is very close to 33, so let's just make it 33. But that's not the case, because at 32.9, the capacity is completely exhausted. So that means there's no room for that point one. Similarly, we have 1,358 counters. At 35.86, the capacity is completely exhausted. That means we're not gonna, we're, gonna, we're using all of the counters, all of the 1,358 counters to make pattern number 35.86. So that means if we were to make pattern number 36, how many counters will we need? We can figure that out, okay? So I'm gonna plug in 36 in place of n. So 36 square plus two times 36. So what you get is 1368. So that means you don't have those extra 10 counters. So here, what we'll do is we'll round this down, not off, we'll round this down to 35, okay? So it's not just simple rounding off all the time, okay? You have to use your uh, logic and then come up with the final answer. So hopefully I've made that clear with the help of this example that I gave. Okay, now, part two says he uses all of the remaining counters to make another pattern in the sequence, pattern Q, find the value of Q. Okay, let's do that. Now, remaining counters, now remember he, is making pattern number 35, which if I want to find out requires how many counters, I can simply do that by plugging 35 in place of n. So 35 square plus two times 35. So let's do that with the help of a calculator. So that means he's using one, two, nine, five counters out of 1358. So how many are left? Let's work that out. So 1358 minus one, two, nine, five. Let's see. 135, I think it's going to be 63, but let's find out anyway. Oops, not divide, subtract, 63, yeah. So that means you're left with 63 counters, okay. Now, he's, he, what, what exactly is he doing? He's using, he's making another pattern in the sequence, which is pattern Q, and pattern Q takes up 63 counters, according to the question. We have to find out the value of Q. Okay, so Q square, so basically, we have N square plus 2N, right? So Q square plus 2Q will give me the number of counters I need to make pattern Q, which is basically equal to 63, okay? So we're sort of reverse engineering here. We have, we know the number of counters just like we did previously. We need to know what pattern we can make from these number of counters. So let's write this nicely. Q square plus 2Q minus 63 equals to zero. Again, I'm gonna use my calculator to solve it. Although you can do it mentally, factors of 63 that give you two, nine and seven, yeah. So but again, let's use calculator just to be sure. One, two, and minus 63. So you have seven, Q is equals to seven, or Q is equals to minus nine. Now, it's kind of obvious that it has to be seven, therefore seven is our final answer. So I hope you guys understood this question. I am gonna make another video in which I'm gonna solve another question. So stay tuned for that. See you guys in the next one. Take care, bye-bye.